success what you, what you guys have been doing so far in, in, in limiting the, uh, like, are you seeing a turning point? Are you still seeing this as a, as a growing problem? No, I think it's still a growing problem. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think we're still in the infancy stage of education with uh, the community as to uh, how big of a problem it is and how mm -hmm. pervasive it is in your communities. If you think mm -hmm. that you're in some bubble here in Winnaway County or in Adrian, I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's just as rampant here as it is everywhere else. Yeah. But our Lenaway people did drop off 6,500 hydrocodones at one of our drug take backs. Um, they were from Rinks, and Shepherd and Stoll, and Cunningham Drugs. Do you guys remember those places? Uh -huh. People still had medicines in their cabinets uh, yeah. from right. Shepherd and Stoll. So they will do it when, when this service is available. 2,200 pounds, Sheriff, is taken in. What do you what do you guys think about ideas? Are there ideas how the community can put something to the churches? Like this is a conversation. I mean, you start here and then bring it out to the rest of the community. And how? What are the things? You know, you've been working hard on this for a long time. Do you, do you have ideas like for the people that are here? Maybe what can we do here in Adrian and Lenawee County that would help each other? And you know, identify. I mean, there are some things legislatively, but I personally believe that this you know the. The communities are the ones that have to hold each other and help each other and and learn from each other. So, what is it here in Adrian that we could do to help each other, maybe in the recovery process? So that I mean, I know that we talked about the stigma piece earlier. I think that's a big conversation that probably needs time. I know the hospital idea is a great idea. And are there people that aren't at the table right here? I know you said you had a town hall. We keep doing this and. Or is there, can we do a doctor one, or is it, would it be in the churches, or where would it be that we could start having a conversation here? You know what I've really found the most success, and I bet I could do it right now, as if it's magic, is when people in recovery talk to people who don't understand about this yet. Um, I've had some real tough groups to talk to, and some kids, some teenagers, you didn't think they were going to care, but I needed them to care. And I brought a recovering person in, and uh, you could have heard a pin drop. They were so interested, they were so compassionate, they were so involved. And um, one of my friends in that way is Heather in the back, and she will go and she'll go with me and talk to um, kids. And her entire drug experience was a two month period from the time she first, on the worst day you can imagine, uh, she, she had a very bad age. She, she, someone was right there with it. And for two months when it ended, her, her life just really, really went out of control and how she's gotten it back together. And her probation officer um, is really promoting her in the community. And there's a couple of recovering people that are really making that gap. And I think if you, if we, so March 24th, we're having some more of our recovering people talk. And I think you'll be really moved. Move to help me get this disposal information out. Move to lock up your own meds and make sure your kids are locking up their meds. And that's one thing I've noticed. I, I think more of a collaboration. The more we can collaborate with different, you know, like you said, using you know the people in their stories to um, the more different agencies from the law, for, you know, from doctors to law enforcement to uh, you know. You know, I, I really believe that, and, and, it, and you guys can help me out here, what is the most effective way that somebody can recover? What is the most effective? You've got to find that most, is it inpatient? Is it, do they, you know, you talked about, um, you talked about how 30 days, 60 days is not enough. Or what is it, they get two, and you said the recovery takes seven, seven times and they're only allowed to be two, you know, the inpatient stuff maybe has to be more, but the only way that that's going to happen is, is, you know, for us to realize that there's a problem. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to use the, the Flint situation, we didn't realize there was a problem until it hit the newspapers, and we're going to, you know, we're going to give the money for that, but realize that in the time that we've been here, from six o'clock, what is it, 150 to 300 people in America have died. You know, I, I heard a statistic that every 10 minutes, 100 people are dying due to addiction. You know, I, I, it was on the other night, and they, they came up with that number. And it's, it's, so in an hour and a half, we probably had 300 people die due to addiction from the time. I have uh, 46 people die from overdose every day. 46? In the United States, right? 
So they, they had a they had a number. So that's every. Maybe that was maybe that was I don't know maybe I heard that hundred every so many you know maybe I'm not sure what they were they. Yeah. Is there a centralized group or place in this community where a lot of white county people can go to for what? Their addiction problems or mental health problems. Well, mental health you can find a lot, but, but mental health and the addicted people are facing the same thing. They can't get long enough treatment to uh, really overcome where they're going, whether they're mentally ill or they have an addiction problem. <coughs> There's just not the resources to help them stay and support them long enough to, like, pull their own selves up again by their own bootstraps to be able to go out and function. And I, <clears throat> before I retired, there was a, where I worked, there was a small psychiatric unit. And they bring these people in, and insurance only pays this much. And I watched, it made me sick. I watched these people get so dosed on antipsychotics and anti-anxiety, and then, in five days, for sure, if possible, they're gone. And I'm thinking to myself, in five days, did they get a support group going? Did they, they don't even know how these medications are gonna work for another two weeks that they've given them. Um, and I just see a whole failure in that system in terms of giving certain people the time to be able to get it together, whether it's mental illness or it's addiction. I see that. And there's just doesn't appear to be the money resources out there. Or the comprehension that I'm a long-term smoker, okay? All your long-term smoking programs are three months. I'm gonna tell you, keep them on drugs so they don't smoke for six months <laughs> with some real lifestyle changes. And that's what needs to be done for the mentally ill and the people with addiction. Because every year I quit for three months. <laughs> And then I'm back at it again. So, and it is a form of addiction. It's just legal. <laughs> yeah, there is a real vibrant recovery community like in Ann Arbor. Yeah. When you go to there, they've got like an old school that somebody gave them, so now they can leave all their literature there, and they can all have all kinds of meetings all the time. And the people walk around them like on a movie set. I mean, they're just popular with it people and popular, uh, recovery is popular and these guys that are going to take this medicine and fly it to people on drones. The point is they have techie ability, they're U of M guys, you know, and they're going to go work with the FAA, FAA to um, get the naloxone delivered on drones, but you know they're working on it and there are people in recovery themselves, so yeah. I don't know, is it a great recovery community in Lenawee County? I, yeah, got the AA and the NA. You know, we need to get the families well too. So when the people come home, um, so people keep saying to me, "Why would I go to the classes? I'm, I'm not sick." You know, I, I, why would I be punished? It was in a class. So we need to promote family recovery. We have some great resources for that. Um, in Monroe, we started uh, we started HA, which is heroin and not. So it's kind of more. I don't know. It's a little bit more where the heroin addict doesn't feel it. So. And then we also were about to start next month, we're going to start a, a meeting, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's going to be where um, the family of either somebody who has died from an overdose or somebody who has an active addiction can come to the meeting and there's going to be recovery, people in recovery there so that we can communicate, we can help each other with whatever's process. It's fantastic. So whether a mother comes in, she's like, oh, my son keeps going out, we'll stop and make him. This is what helped me, like, and everybody cut me off from everything and I had to do stuff with him. For myself, that's when I got sober, you know. Or when the mother is like, you know, my son died, well, he's no way, he's, he's up, whatever, he's the one that's helping us right now, you know. And we can lean on each other, so I think that's going to be a good, a good thing for the community. Well, I was going to add to what you were saying about Ann Arbor. That's actually where I went, I went to Dump Farms. I guess. You guess that? <laughs> it's cool. Did you see the farmer? The farmer? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's a great uh, treatment facility, and um, no, what really um, helped me out was actually the community itself. You know, uh, when I actually left that treatment, I mean, you know, I just 
I could not believe how many people had reached out to me. And the same thing would happen with me. I, I had uh, you know, nowhere to go. I, I didn't have a card.